One Man and His Dog, <laughs> episode two. Let's go! <laughs> Are you ready? Okay. Okay. Shh. Come on. Shush. Shush. There he is. It's actually. Oh, I haven't set my watch. It's quarter past six in the morning. So it should be a nice little strut. The reason we go in so early is because it's going to be a scorcher today. So it's going to be too hot to take Ross the other way. Right, cross. No, no, no. Uh, he's a boy, isn't he? Right, wait, wait. Cross. No, 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 no. That's enough. You're waking up the whole neighbourhood, yeah? Right, I'm gonna set my watch now. See you in a bit. Here he is, look. Most excited dog. Come say hello, boy. This way. Here. Hello. There he is. He gets so excited. I had one of those. Like he's coming up to. He's old, about two and a half years old now, he is. So I remember when I first had him. We had him at eight weeks old. I wasn't very well when I had him. Um, mentally and stuff. I was going through a lot of things, let's say. And obviously one of the... is the birds, local wildlife. Yeah, one of the main reasons I wanted a dog, other than the company and stuff, because I haven't got kids, uh, I wanted to take him walking and run in eventually with me, you know? So... He hated going outside the house. Uh, I remember like he was, I think, a couple of months in after having him. He'd, uh, he'd walk for about five or six steps and he'd lie down on the floor and I have to pick him up and walk another five, four or five steps. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but can you see he's really misty out today? Yeah, strange. I think it's, it's just like, just before half past six in the morning, it's 16 degrees already. It feels hotter than that. But it's gonna hit, apparently, almost 30 degrees today. So obviously I'm not gonna go out with Rossi in that heat. Wait, 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 cross. He's good listening. All right, calm down. Oh, I get so excited. There's another road now. This is like the industrial estate we're in now. And he'll uh, he'll wait. If he's a good boy, to cross the next road. I think that's almost the mid. Well, there's one other road. You guess you could say we're going to cross today. Um, he hasn't been on, on his lead once. It's just quiet at this time in the morning. Um, you know, some busy cars bombing past, you know. Uh, really good training for him, this is. The man having a shave in the car, as you do. Each to their own. <laughs> Didn't expect to see that in the morning. All right. Let's see how good it is now. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Good boy. Oh, good. You don't have to tell him anything. He just watches my finger so intensely, you know. And he crosses. Now, obviously, this is my second episode of, I guess we're going to call it One Man and His Dog. Okay. And I'm really glad I filmed the last time. Um, well, we've been down here quite a lot since, but captured on video, I guess you could call it. We, Rossi was running along here and I heard like a ping. It sounded like a cyclist bell, you know, was coming behind me. So 
again as i'm filming um i turned around expecting a cyclist to be there but there's no one there but then as i go home i noticed that rossi he's had it less than two weeks he had a um god oh, the fuck yeah he had a, a new dog tag you know personalized with my number his name and my phone number on it so you know god forbid anything if he went missing at least there'd be some chance um the owner um they could contact me the owner you know i've actually found before a dog and uh yeah so it is important to have a telephone number i'll tell you about that actually in a bit when i found that dog or dog followed us home basically i was so stressful i wasn't well at the time see so uh yeah so i'm glad i filmed it and then as i was watching it back i heard that ping when i watched it in slow motion i noticed yeah let's cross oh you don't know which way to go now look bless him no we're not going that way today <laughs> wow yeah so we had um i could see the dog tag come off and i knew exactly where to look so the next morning i think we were going for a run i made sure exactly where it was you know it's no good to anyone else in the world other than me and rossi is it something like that yeah so it's a little happy little story from like a positive from starting this vlog series i'm gonna do i hope the camera's picking up this fog it's strange A horror movie is set in the fog, isn't it? Silent Hill. Ooh. Well, I am happy to report as well, those of you that watched the first one, those tents that were dumped here, like, looked like they'd been cut up and stuff, have actually gone. I think they were, like, literally right here. So it's nice to think that someone, maybe the owners has come back and tidied up after themselves that's all i want you know let's see what the tide's gonna do today oh through jurassic park he's waiting that boy i can hardly see the the water so much fog check this out didn't get poked in the eye either by a branch let's have a look over this side now is it Wow. Gosh, it's lovely. I don't have to excuse all the litter. Look at that. Wow. Okay. So, we're going to go a different way today. Um, I think we... We went towards um last time we went alongside what's called britain ferry or towards britain ferry so today we're going to go the other way so it's kind of into or towards rather neath town um but i think we'll have a look how we feel when we get down there i think we're gonna go check out um skewing place called Skewin and it's Neath Abbey it's a uh, it's actually the, uh, that river that we were just looking at it's kind of the other side of that I suppose yes yeah, so we're going to check that out and I'll take you guys with me in a bit yeah Rossi doesn't know which way to go now bless him okay I'm gonna try and point I'm sure you know who's pointing that way that way or oh, not <laughs> yeah that's right so last time one of it we went towards um long britain ferry this way yeah this is the way we go now to go into neath town might see a little bit of that in a sec but again it's really nice then you'll notice <clears throat> there's a lot of litter 
to that. Oh, that winds me up, let me tell you. First thing I do every single morning on my job is do a litter pick. I'm tempted to ask if I can borrow my litter picker and stuff and come down here, you know? Yeah, in the mist. Yeah, I hope the camera's picking it up. Right, so we cut it off there. Good morning, everyone, again. Yeah, look at this. Absolutely beautiful. All the lilies. I think it's like a, almost like a, a trap down there where all the litter seems to be gathering further down. But you have got oh, that beer be can or whatever scattered in there. People just don't care where they live. That's what it, uh, it tells me. Rather than the litter. Yeah, I really like living here. It's coming up to... God, is it two years I've lived? I bought my house. End, end of July yes yeah, so I've been living here now well in July two years right cyclists come in let's see how good he is now right Rossi keep in come in sit good boy good listening <laughs> you get so excited Yeah, so this is again, well, I've been walking for 15 minutes. It's less than 50, it's about 10 minute walk from my house, you know, if I used to walk direct down here. Yeah, so I've obviously got my sunglasses on this morning. The sun is out. I can feel the sun on here, you know, but uh, this is one of those things at this time of the year, I think I put my sunglasses on, like whenever I go for a walk with Rossi, I put my baseball hat on and just put my sunglasses on now, you know, unless it's fucking raining or something. Oh, yeah, so hope you're enjoying, see you in a bit. Oh, there, I love you can see how foggy it is. Wow, you can hear there's like a factory, it's a busy old factory, most mornings we come down here, they're, uh, well you can hear that noise, they're obviously busy in there, the local artists, the artwork, I quite like it, well most of it, it's not the best artwork you ever see, or graffiti, whatever you want to call it. God, I can hardly see. Yeah, take the sunglasses are off. Take them off. Yes, uh, sun right in my eyes, and with that fog, it's kind of clearing up a bit now, though. To be fair. Yeah, so we're still walking along the canal. But sometimes, you know, if I've had a really hard day in work or I'm not feeling too good, this is almost as far as we walk some nights. We go, it's good practice for him though. So we walk along here, the canal, and there's a way you can go down there, round. It's like the other side of the industrial estate. But it's good training for Rossi because he goes along the lead and you know, most cars, when they see a dog, they, they don't go bombing along, do they? they some do, mind, but most, uh, most don't, you know? I'm looking, as if I'm gonna run off. Always keeping an eye on me. It's funny, you see, when we go, when the whole family go, uh, like me, my mum, so when we go, my, obviously my mum's dog, Max, comes as well. I uh, say my brother, his, uh, my sister-in-law, uh, my brother, my sister-in-law, and their kids. 
this is a half decent crowd of us here, you know. Uh, he still only watches me. Apparently that's how some callies are, you know. Yeah, I see that car now, he went, didn't come bombing down here. It's like a shed, this line here. It's like for pedestrians uh, and cyclists and driving there. Okay, wait for me, boy. Yeah, good boy. We go, you stop there, so we go on this side, is it? Come on this way. Oh, we must be waiting for it to open. There's a queue. <clears throat> Guys, really, they are. They must work there. I haven't checked the time, but it's still around about half a six in the morning. I'm keen. Oop. There we are. Use my first poo bag. It's normally pretty good with poos. <laughs> That's the funny thing, mine. It's not the nicest thing to talk about, is it? Dog shit. But <laughs> that's how me and my mum gauge how uh, healthy our dogs are. You know, if they got a stomach bug. You know, Rossi's got a very sensitive stomach. Like, uh, say again, when we're on holiday, we've got to be very careful. I'm always watching, like, what are the kids giving him. So I know, like, I wouldn't even risk sausage giving him, I always share my food with him, unless I'm having sausage, because uh, it'll go straight to his stomach, and I'll be the one cleaning it up. It's not his fault, you know. Yeah, another stunning morning. Oh, you see the ducks there? Yeah, the fog, I think, is pretty much gone now. Now, this building here, I've been, again, nearly two years I've been walking down here now. You can all lose you. Can you hear like that thumping? Or there's like a music, really bassy music. And again, I assumed it was a factory or something like that. And it's all hours, there's that music going on. So again, before seven o'clock in the morning, bouncing in there, right? It's actually a gym. The gym I joined was closed down, unfortunately. But I see it as a sign because I work in a gym now and I get free membership. There's no point in joining a gym, is there, when you already work in one? And the one I work in is a very, very good one. All right, so we're coming into now. This is as close as we're going to get to Neath Town Centre. Quite a few people about. Let's check the actual time. Oh, there's the dog bin. 6.43 a.m. So, wait, wait. Yeah, this is the only other road we'll be in here. So you can go straight on. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Wait, wait. Good boy. Yeah, you can go straight on that way. Uh, that's Neath Town Centre there. But we're going to go today over here. It's really nice. So we're going to actually cross the, the river now. Yes, you're good. You're looking. Bless him. Normally I put him on the lead here if it's busy. Like say, I'm coming down to half past five in the evening. It can be quite busy and cars, unfortunately, go bombing down here into the gym. Which way? Yeah, so good. Cross. Yeah, so the gym is down there. Oh, and funny one. When do we come up here? Sunday. So we came down here jogging. There's a field over there, a really nice field. So I just... Wanted to jog a couple of laps of that. So you can see where he's gone now. He's all the way down there, right? But I wanted to cross 
the river and the road. So I went that way. Oh my God, I had to come back. He couldn't figure out to go round. Oh, it was a right faff it was. There we are, so this is the river we're crossing. Very nice. Sun is shining. Yeah, so that's... Now... Oh, excuse the litter. It winds me up. So... Again, you can go both directions. You can go this way. Get him, he knows. But we're gonna go this way. <laughs> and this is where all the litter, look at this. Lovely, good job, Neith. Yeah, so we're gonna go down here. The good thing is that litter's only by there. There's not a lot of it along here now. Well, it shouldn't be. Yeah, so this is that river. Again, it, the tide's pretty pretty out at the moment. But let me tell you, it's stunning when that's in. It looks nice now, I think. So you got, yeah, the river's that side. Then we've got another canal then. Just that side. Now this, I'm not sure on distance. Oh, look. That's, that's big fish, isn't it? Dead run, that. Any fishing experts out there? God, he's big, isn't he? Oh, I feel sad now. I remember I thought I saw a dead horse once. Oh my God. Uh, one, well, Many years ago, I, I I lived in Carlisle, and I was commuting because I worked in Carlisle. That's why I lived there. And let's be honest, nobody moves there. Um, I didn't think there's much to do there. I won't be going back, put it that way. And I was asked to cover my I was a store manager. I was asked to cover my store and Newcastle's at the same time, only for a short period of time, like six weeks or something. So. The company bought me like a six week go. Cost them a lot of money, like a train ticket basically. I could use as many times as I want. So I got used to this commute. It's quite, I think over an hour. Um, I wasn't actually going to Newcastle, sorry. It was Gateshead, the, the metro centre. I was working in there. So some of the scenery you see up there was absolutely beautiful going from pretty much from one coast to the other coast. So, there was this horse I used to see in this field. And one day, oh, I saw a lovely brown horse he was, chocolate brown horse. He was on the floor. He was dead on the floor. I thought, oh my God. He's like, lovely morning. And I, it upset me. I didn't know the horse. It was just a horse I'd probably locked out the window 20 odd times so far. And everyone was like, what's the matter with you? And I didn't say anything. Because they probably think I'm stupid. But it's not a nice thing to see. I've never grown up you know, with pictures of horses or anything in my, in my bedroom. Never had horse toys or anything like that. But I was like, oh, I really do like horses. And on the train journey back, he was running around the field, wasn't he? He must have been sleeping. <laughs> so I just assumed, oh, no, he's dead. Like, I, I didn't know what to do. I thought, do I need to phone someone to say there's a dead horse but I didn't know where it was I couldn't say oh in a field along the train line that you can see <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I was so happy then no, I instantly snapped out of the depression that I was feeling at the time you know right I think I'll tell the story now of when Oh, it was so stressful. So I wasn't well. It was before I had Rossi. So I was taking my mum's dog, Max, for a walk. So he was still... I think he was still a puppy. He was probably 12 months old. So going for a walk, usual walk. Uh, now this is in the Gowerton area. And on the way back, 
it was like all fields it wasn't canals like this it was more like into the random valleys like um hills and stuff you know and just finding little walkways or whatever so yeah we went did our walk and i was aware this dog was kind of behind us i didn't think too much he's sniffing with rossi so then we were walking then the way home was like through this through the village you know next to the road so i put my dog my mum's dog sorry max on a lead and uh i thought the owner the, there's a bloke behind us so i thought why isn't he putting his dog on the lead so this dog was sniffing around sniffing around and we were getting this bloke was about 40 meters behind us so i thought it's a bit odd he's not putting his dog on a lead so i thought right we'll cross the road and the owner obviously put there wasn't busy traffic thank god but the owner will put this dog on a lead oh sticking the leads All right okay bye it's okay <laughs> okay <laughs> morning yes yeah, so we crossed this road and as I turned around, this lorry came bombing down, right? Like from nowhere. Slammed on his brakes. So this dog, this bloke's dog, was in the middle of the road. He'd followed us. I couldn't believe it. And the bloke in the lorry wound his window down, screamed at me, get your effing dog on a lead, he said. My dog was on a lead. Oh, my mum's dog. We're calling my dog for the video. I said, my dog is on a F in me. They shout, he was aggressive to me. So I turned it up to 10. Tony, angry Tony, right? It was so frustrating. And I was, I looked at this, the bloke, the owner of the dog, and he just walked off. Of course, it wasn't his dog. So I was like, well, whose dog is this? So then Max had done, again, he's a puppy, right? So we'd done a good hour. You know, he, he was fine, so we're on the way home. We'd done our walk, we're on the way home. So I thought then, well, what am I gonna do with this dog? There's no lead, nothing. And then luckily this woman was doing a bit of gardening. It was a lovely day, I remember. She was doing a bit of gardening and she, um, she came out to the commotion and stuff. And we were phoning, so we got the, what's his name? Oh, Meg. Funny name for a dog, but the dog's name was Meg. And it had two phone numbers, one either side of the dog collar. So I phoned with the first number, no answer, but it wouldn't leave, let me leave a voicemail. They had, <coughs> they had it turned off or whatever. Oh, we are in the suburbs now, look. Yeah, so. Oh, hang on one sec. Yeah, so we had, um, sorry, I had to cut the camera off. I, it was really dark and we just come out from under that bit there. That's a bit dark, I don't wanna <laughs> fucking trip over. Uh, yeah, so I phoned the first phone number on the dog tag, no answer. And then bear in mind, there's this woman standing next to me. She was helping. And, um, what was it was yeah so i phoned the other number and this really elderly sounding woman answered like hello and i was trying to explain so i said oh hi there sorry to bother you um i think i've got your dog i don't own a dog boss i'm not interested and put the phone down i was like well what your phone number i think is on this dog collar so I would have left that there. Now it would have been enough for me. I would have gone, whatever my next stage of looking after, they'll find the owner of this dog was, right? So, um, the woman said, phone it back. So I, normally I wouldn't have, right? So, because she was there, she prompted me, yeah, phone it back, she said. That's right, okay. So I phone it back and she was tucked in. She wasn't like, I don't know what her problem was. She, she probably thought I was like some, salesman or some con man or something maybe she got conned before and she's very wary of people phoning her 
and I said, I, right, I said, I'm really sorry to bother you, I just spoke to you. And she went, what? And I said, your phone number for some reason is on this dog tag. And she said, I haven't got a dog. She said again, I said, well, all right, okay. But she went, my daughter's got a dog. As if, like, as if she was one up in me kind of thing. As if she was really clever. I was like, like almost slapping my head thinking, you fucking idiot. Well, I, so I said, okay, so I've got your daughter's dog. It says Meg. Yeah, that's my daughter's dog. It's not my dog though. I was like, oh, like, are you gonna help me or not? That's what I was thinking, like. So I said, right, there's a phone number on there. And she went, well, clearly, because that's my number. I said, well, is there a way to contact the owner of the dog? And she said, I'll phone her now. I said, well, can you give me a ring on this number? She said, well, I haven't got you now. I was like, oh my God, right. So get a pen and paper, write my number down. Got went through all this with her, right? Again, I'm trying to help these people now. So I kept, she was trying to phone her daughter, basically. That's what it was. It was a daughter's dog. And I'm not very good at telling this story. So I'm waiting there now. My dog, Max is like wanting to go home. He doesn't understand what we're there for. This dog on the side of the road without a lead. So we walked a little bit, trying, the woman said, oh, I know someone who's got dogs, um, might have a spare lead. So we knocked on this door, or this woman did, she knew them. So have you got a spare lead? This woman, right, comes out, looks me up and down and goes, I won't get it back. And I was thinking, like we were basically stuck there by the side of this busy road because one of the dogs wasn't on a lead. I wasn't going to put my Max's dog uh, lead on this dog because my duty is to look after our dog. So, but obviously I don't want to get see this other dog get hurt. Um, so the woman phones back and she says, right, I can't get hold of my daughter. And I was like, well, where do you live? Must be in the area, isn't it? This dog's wandered off. And she'd said, what did she say? Calais? That was miles away from where we were. So I thought, right, what I'll do, surely this woman now is in kind of back pedal, back track, if you like, where I've just been for a walk. And hopefully someone will be out looking for this dog, Meg. So someone's calling, Meg, Meg, like that. I'll be able to shout, she's here. So we basically did our walk, no answer, kept trying to phone that phone number. But what was frustrating is that phone, where the, the owner of that dog, they kept hanging up. So it wasn't ringing like before, it was like ringing and hanging up straight away. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, like. So we did this, oh, sorry, we got, I managed to get, um, this woman knocked on one door and this other man said, I've got string. So we got like a like blue rope, if you like. Got this blue rope and um, basically tied it to Meg, this dog, around the collar. So I had a bit of control over her. She was well behaved, but she was a young dog as well. I think she was, I found out later, about 18 months old. So you can argue, still a puppy as well. So I backpedal, no sign. I thought, well, what am I going to do? And they were lucky I was on a day off work, okay? So Max, the dog I'm responsible for, was really tired. So I thought, we're gonna have to go home. This is my mother's house. Uh, so I went home and um, like I was, I was there when I was saving to buy for mortgage for my house. So I was gonna go home. I thought, right, go home and I'll Google like where to take a dog, you know, like a warden or whatever you gotta do. But it was like half past five, six o'clock by the time we got home. So all these places were closed. So I, I was exhausted. And it, Max was really excited because he's got, he put a girl home, a girl dog home, you know. So my mum comes home and I, all I could do basically was keep trying to phone this phone number. And every time it was hang up, hang up, hang up all the time. You know, like as if I was harassing someone and they kept just hanging up straight away. So frustrating. We put a thing on Facebook then. Um, lost dog owner apparently is in the Kim, uh, Calais area. And you really do appreciate when you do these Facebook posts, when people share it. Like, 
you don't appreciate people saying, oh, I hope, oh, she's lovely, I hope you find the owner. It's like, yeah, that's nice, but we need to get it back. Never mind that, just share it, get, get the word out so the owner can come and get the dog. And again, I suffer with um, anxiety, social anxiety, stress, depression. And I was diagnosed at this point as well. So I was on medication, thank God. This was winding me up. This is a big deal for me, this was, right? So my mum comes home. So she's there. Like, to be fair, this dog, he was, she was lovely, right? She wasn't jumping up on the furniture. So obviously, with the way she's been brought up, she doesn't. Because she was looking at Max on the settee. Like, wow, you're allowed up there kind of thing. <clears throat> but we were getting ready to have Meg stay overnight. So a good couple of hours go by now. I give, I give, I said, I said to my mum, like it's about seven o'clock in the evening. So I said, I'll try it again. And I said, like, watch now. She's seen like how quick they were hanging up. It didn't hang up. Ring, ring, ring. Someone answered the phone. It was a man answered the phone. So I said, oh, hi there. Sorry to bother you. He went, yeah. And I said, I've got um, Meg. Oh, you've got her with you. Where are you? So I said, I said, I can meet you by the train station in Gowton. We were there now. He did not say thank you one time. My mum was like, because I was on loudspeaker, she was like, are you kidding me? There was no urgency whatsoever in his voice. He wasn't thankful. If he went missing, if Rossi went missing, I would be frantic. So I'd be answering the telephone, let me tell you that, right? So they came. I waited another, what, 45 minutes for them to come. But I thought, right, that's the end of it. And the woman, to be fair, the woman gets out. Uh, there's a man and a woman. Oh, she said thank you, to be fair. And she said, oh, I haven't got Facebook. I said, I tried phoning this. I said, I've, uh, I think it was your mother I spoke to. Oh, yeah, I don't speak to her anymore. And it was, I don't want to know your life story. Yes, yeah, so that was the, Meg went off in the sunset. And do you know what was funny? She, oh, she said, oh, she's terrible. She doesn't listen when she's off the lead. There's the Abby now. We'll have a closer look in a sec. Yeah, we, um, I, yeah, I was going for a jog about two weeks later and that Meg started following me again. I couldn't, like, they hadn't learned from their lesson at all. But I suppose it's naive of me to think that everyone loves dogs as much as me and my family love dogs because they are part of my family dogs as far as I'm concerned. I know my mother feels the same as well. Like... He's my son, as far as I'm concerned. A new boy. Come say hello. You good boy? You very good boy. <clears throat> yes, yeah, so that was the story of... Oh, we nearly had another dog. He was a collie as well. Uh, she was a collie, rather. Lovely dog. Yeah, so we'll have a look now at this abbey. This is, gosh, this is 3.7 kilometers we've walked so far. It's a lovely walk. Nice and flat, you know, not a, not a hard walk. I think I've done this walk with my mother. Yeah, so she can do it. Yeah, I got all this litter here polystyrene. Now that doesn't accidentally end up in the canal, does it? Rather than the rubbish, it's stunning down here. Obviously the weather helps. <clears throat> yeah, we'll have a look at this Neath Abbey. I'll check it out. Yeah, come on, boy. the other side now if you were to jog down there it's no good for us because <clears throat> the canal goes so many hundred meters and there's like it's like a metal floor in it's like a grid oh it's closed never mind we'll walk around here walk over here a bit Yeah, it's all closed. Never mind. 
<clears throat> yeah, this is Neath Abbey. Oh, I made a friend. Hello, you stay with me. I don't know the history of it, of the Abbey, but it's a lovely, nice thing to come and see. I was going to pretend it was my house. Yeah, it's a bit of a fixer up there, you know. <laughs> Dog getting excited in the car. See, people, some people got to drive to these places, but we're fortunate enough to uh, be able to walk here. Right, I think we'll walk a little bit further. Yeah, but normally that gate's open. Maybe it is open, it's just closed, not locked, you know. Maybe um, maybe you can walk around in there. Why not? I think dog's supposed to be on the lead in there. But yeah, that's Neath Abbey. There we go, so we're on our way back now. It's oh, almost, bang on now, just got to four kilometers. So it might be, probably be just under, I reckon. Just under eight kilometer walk today. Yeah, it's a nice, pretty much flat all the way though. It's not a hard walk, it's just stunning, you know. Yeah, so there's the abbey. So we literally, if you can see it through the trees. See, doing his thing. He'll be asleep all day now then. But I bet you there'll be people out now. Five o'clock finishing work. And then they go, oh, it's a beautiful day. Let's take the dog out. And it's going to be absolutely boiling for them. It's, it's warm now. It's not even 20 degrees yet. It's not far off. But it's going to be another 10 degrees hotter again. That's crazy. I remember once, it was horrible. I don't know, I, to this day, I don't know what happened. It was late September or even early October. And we'd gone for a run. It wasn't, it was nice weather. there wasn't boiling. But whenever I go running, we always go early in the morning anyway. And go home. And I noticed Ross, he was walking funny, like really funny. I thought, oh, has he pulled his paw? And he's very timid to let me see um, you know, his paws. And bless him, he had like, I don't know how to explain. All four paws, like burst blisters, burst skin. It was horrible. It must have been so painful for him. I, t to this day, I don't know how he done it. All four, I'll never forget, he was middle of the night, didn't he, when they got to let the dog out, they need to do their business. He did his business and he just stood there watching me. And I was like, okay, and he just stood there and he was like, can you pick me up kind of thing? Bless him, so I had to carry him upstairs and back to bed. But yeah, I was, I don't know what that was. So, again, any dog dads out there, you probably, do the same as me. I do like a little MOT on him every now and again. Check his paws. Every he has a brush every week. The amount of uh, fucking fur coming off. Well, all dogs this time of the year. It's amazing. He's not bald. The amount that was coming off him. Yeah. So that's the. I think it's an A road. There. Yeah, that's an A road. That's the road. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's where I go along to go to work. It's like two miles on that road. And I'm there. I think I can't fault there. I wanted a job that was closer to home. To be fair, though to be honest, I'd rather be able to walk to work so I can get rid of the motorbike. Because it's just an expense. Not a money that thing costs me. And I buy a brand new bike thinking it'd be no maintenance. But no, it's cost me a flipping fortune. But the Yamaha is better than the KTM. The KTM I had, I was cursed that was. That was another one I bought brand new. Nothing, 
great for 12 months and after that I was nothing but trouble oh. thought I'd flip the camera around hello <laughs> enjoying this fine weather I've got a week off this week so I was going to go on holiday but I decided not to go I haven't always got to go away anyway have you like Rossi loves all these walks so I didn't have a good day yesterday sometimes if you suffer with uh, mental health sometimes you just wake up and you know you're gonna have one of those days kind of thing so i almost wrote the day off i got up rossi had his breakfast i think i had a protein shake that's what i have for breakfast uh i i wanted to go out um at least take rossi for a walk i thought i'll take him in an hour so i had a coffee and another hour goes by i'm still sitting on the settee yeah, it's a bit of a downer yesterday, but with my the counselling that I've had, I don't think I've had enough, but I've had fantastic counselling. It teaches you that those feelings will pass, and that is so important for me to realise and understand that I'm not feeling like that isn't permanent, because it used to worry me, like, why am I feeling so down? Um... Um, now I know that it's natural and you'll have good days like today I got up early you know no alarm was set today we left the house what was it like quarter past six this morning you know just get up and go so I'll have a good day today but I haven't spoken about video games once have I I absolutely smashed Street Fighter 6 yesterday Oh my god, my car, I'm in open world mode, or world tour mode is it, and so I've created my character, my character's level 30 or 31, I googled it, I think the maximum you can get your character is 100, so I've done a bit of the old, uh, the grind to get my character level up, it's a very good game isn't it? I love Metro City, just exploring and Easter eggs. Like I found Dana Bicky's karate studio. I got a feeling what they're gonna do with Capcom. When they launch like the season passes, hopefully Dana Bicky is a fan favorite, isn't he? When they have him, like say season three or four or something, when they unlock these characters, they'll have, um, Danabiki's karate studio will be open, that part of the map will expand. I always think someone's cycling behind me. But I can kind of see, but just never know. I'd hate to be that guy that's in everyone's way. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what basically that's what I played. I did watch watch the rest of Arnold. So he's the politician and the movie star. I enjoyed that. Um, and I watched, oh, Creed 3, I watched that. It's definitely the worst out of the three. It's okay. I would have been a, bit, a little bit gutted if I paid for it. So I paid for the first uh, two, so Creed 1 and Creed 2. I bought them when they first came out on iTunes, and they're really good. But this one, I'll talk about it more, my, what I've been playing, what I've been watching, what I've been reading. Sorry, the sun hasn't literally just gone in. We're coming up to these underpass bridges things. Yeah, so watch that. Uh, what did I do? I didn't do any housework. I did a little bit. But my plan this week is to... Like, I've got a three-bedroom house. Like, the main bedroom, or the master bedroom, is my games room <laughs> let's be honest and uh, I'm in the middle bedroom I haven't done any painting I literally all I've done in there is put a 
a berserk picture of guts up on the wall, frame picture. Uh, so I haven't done anything there. And I've got like what I call the room of doom. It's getting much better, but it was like a storage room, mainly for my mother's stuff. Cause she's, since me moving there, she's sold a house, bought a new house and she needed somewhere for storage short term nearly two years later we're getting through it though there's probably now it was one point you can only just open the door i need to find my glasses not my sunglasses i know where they are they're on my head by my reading glasses i noticed that when i was game hunting with chris on saturday the, the amount of times i said like, oh they haven't got this game he's like it's for that and I was like, call, I, I, won, I called him over. I think it was only like a two pound game, Soldier of Fortune. It was the gold edition for two quid. And I couldn't see it. And to be fair, Chris couldn't see it. So that means they didn't have it. But he's like Hawkeye when it comes to game hunting he is. I can spot anything Street Fighter from 1.4 miles away. Other than that, I'm useless at finding the games I'm looking for, you know? Yeah, so that's the plan. I might do a video. I found, right, a toy box. It's like a castle. It was really cool. It's like a plastic castle. And it's like the lid comes off. It's just box, basically. And it's full of toys. Like I found, who remembers, Manta Force. And what was the other one called? Red Venom. I found them. I got them in the house somewhere. Yeah, I might do a video like going through some of the old toys I've got, you know. Right, we're gonna go under this dark bit again now. So I'll uh, just turn the camera off soon a bit. Uh, coming out of the shadows. Oh, it's gonna be a scorcher today. There he is, star of the show. Rossi, named after Valentino Rossi, in case you didn't know. This year is quite, they've only recently added like um, these chip-ins. It's all right to walk on, but you know when you're running and if you're trying to get, if you're conscious of like your speed, like your kilometers and all that per hour, it slows you right down. It's like, so it's like running in sand. So I always try to stick to the edges, you know, it's not so so deep on the edges. Oh, what's this? Never noticed that before. Gareth Hopkins, 1972 to 2019. Ah, oh, beloved son, brother, uncle, died 19th of February, 2019, age 46, at peace. Oh, he's young, isn't he? Blanky neck. Five years older than me. Oh, rest in peace. Oh, what? Local wildlife luck? He's a loud gun, isn't he? Oh, he's not taking any shit. Look at that. Can you see that traffic on there? There's one there. There's one over there as well. They've been in there so long, they've turned black luck. I'm sure they would have been bright orange or red, wouldn't they? At some point. Very peaceful morning. Oh, best way to start the day though. Just get up, get out with the dog. Perfect for me that is. Oh, we're coming up to the more chippings. I think the man here, you never, I always say hello to him, right? I recognize the dog and he never says hello back. <laughs> I think it's rude. We'll try it now. I'll try saying morning. Yeah, he always ignores me. <laughs> Dickhead. Rossino. Morning. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a good day. Say good morning back. I'm talking 10, 15 times of uh, 
said a lot to him. And he's never once said anything back. Oh, he must be in a good mood today. Maybe his missus kept him happy last night, if you know what I mean. Oh, I can see the thing in the mist. I think that church there, you can see the tower. I can't see my camera. You can see it in the distance there. I'm pretty sure that was a church my brother got married. I was the best man. Oh my God. I was so stressed. I was so honoured to be asked to be the best man, right? At the same time, petrified. First thing I thought, I got to get up in a room and do a speech. Oh my God. I was at almost to the point where I was going to say, I can't do it. You can't turn down being a best man, can you? So, as it turns out, I really enjoyed it when I did it. I did like a presentation. Do you remember the show, This Is Your Life? When they have these celebrities on and they like um, have all these guests they've worked with over the years. Come on, bye. Yeah, so someone came up with the idea, you could do This Is Your Life. So what I did was got loads of photos of um, my brother growing up and stuff, swimming days and all this, and put the projector the other side of the room. So I was talking and nobody was looking at me because they're all looking at the, the projector. I was like, what a genius idea that is. It's lovely now. Nice, relaxing morning. Oh, really warm now, considering it's not even eight o'clock in the morning. We've been going for 5.4 kilometers. So I've got a ways to go. Yeah, we just passed some people. They said good morning as well. I'm on a roll today. Does anyone else get it like that? It's like you say hello to people, just, just acknowledging that they're there. And they just ignore you. It's like, yeah, cheers, mate. It's like when you hold the door open, isn't it? If you hold the door open for someone to let them come through, they don't say thank you. That happens all the time. I used to work, um, not for Debenhams, but when I was working for Jack Jones this one time, we had like concessions and the women in the Swansea Debenhams, that was one of the ones I was working in. Jesus, Chris will vouch for this. He held, <laughs> one time we were talking, he held the door open and all the, the girls, like they work behind, like on the makeup and the health and beauty shit. They're the most stuck up women working there. About eight of them walked past, so me and Chris stood back, let them all go past. No one of them said thank you. And Chris goes again, I guess I'll go fuck myself then. <laughs> and one or two of them looked back as if, what are you on about? And some people haven't been brought up, you've got to remember that. See, you had some people haven't been brought up with manners. Yeah, coming back now. So we're by that, that bridge, if you can see. Well, it seems a lot busier than when we came down. So, I suppose the kids are going to school. People, people working in retail, they're probably going into, into work as well, aren't they? Right, just now we get around here. They really don't want cyclists coming down here. Yeah? They've got, look at that, big boulder. Right, careful. Oh, glass then. One thing I've been lit there, but then smashing bottles of glass. <sighs> oh. Tell them I'm getting old, because I'm like a good moan, don't they? Yeah, there's the other bridge. It's the bridge town. That's a nice, over there is a nice run, you know? Really nice. Right, see you in a bit. There we go, so we're back now, on the way back. Stay on the, this path now. 
pretty much until we get home. We've gone, the watch says 5.7 kilometers. So, five, six, yeah, I don't think we've quite hit the eight uh, kilometer mark today. We might do, I might go a little bit further just to get the mileage up. Or it'll be probably, I reckon, seven and a half closer to there kilometers. That's still a nice hike, you know? A walk of one class, this is a hike. <sighs> yeah, so this is that gym building, you can hear that. I think they play the same song over and over and over and over and over again. And we got the graffiti. Tell you what, when I lived in Paris, there was um, the, the council or the, the people in government or whatever, they were saying there's a major graffiti problem. And trust me, the graffiti was everywhere. All this wall here now, for example, we covered in it. But 90% of the graffiti was whoever done it is extremely talented. So I was really appreciating it. Like some, some of it was like they were doing silhouettes of people. I think what they would do was like wait till night time and it was so detailed, these silhouettes, um, shine a torch. So they'd like spray the shadow kind of thing that was on the wall. It was that, that's how good it was. I thought, how else could you get it looking that good? And I just think, or well, appreciate rather, the creative some of these people. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't like it if someone graffitied my house without my permission. But like, say in my garden now, for example, on one of my walls, garden walls, I wouldn't mind having graffiti as long as I had a say in what it is, you know? I'd be happy. I thought you heard a bell then on the bike. Ah, oh, these people are in work now. You can see the forklift trucks going. There's welding and all sorts going on in there. Must be, seems like they're doing well. Oh, Rossi's got a friend. I think we've seen him before. Have a sniff. <laughs> Hello. There we are. Goodbye. Come on in. Yeah, those people must have been workers that we saw on the way down. So I just checked my watch now. It was just after half a seven in the morning. Yeah, it's too early for these places to be open, you know, for customers, you know. I would have thought so anyway. Boys, there. Come on in. Yeah, this bit here is can be a bit busy with vans and whatnot coming down here. Dee 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 dee. Yeah. So for the rest of the day now, I wanna. I don't know. I'll do some housework. I'm definitely gonna play some Street Fighter 6. The only thing, I've started my playthrough of Near Automata as well. I didn't get a look in yesterday or the day before because of Street Fighter 6. So if I leave it too long, I, I know, I know I won't go back to it because I'll forget. I know the controls aren't that hard, but it'll just be, oh, I can't be bothered. I'll, I'll play it again kind of thing, you know? I might end up deleting it. So I'm gonna keep that going. Um, I did say I wanted to finish that this week, but story mode in Street Fighter 6 is just so addictive. Again, I'll talk about it more in a minute. I'll talk about it on my, what I've been playing, watching, reading series. Right, out the way, yeah. that van needs to come down here. God, 
Don't fall in there, whatever you do. Yeah, so if I was gonna say, yeah, my last thing on Street Fighter 6 then is it's Yakuza with Street Fighter Combat. What an amazing combination for a game, isn't it? I know the story's a bit silly, you know? Right, keep in, boy. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah. See, some people now would have come bombing down there. They're doing a new building. I'll see if the gate's open now. I'll show you. They're not hanging around. I wouldn't. Have, I don't think it's a house. I think it's got to be business. No, you can't see because the gate's closed. But behind it, if you see behind, there's um, you know, that building's flying up. Let me tell you. But they've got. There's nothing in front of, they, they're like literally on the river. You know, no road or anything. If, if it was a house, which I, oh, it's not a house, you can see it's tin. But they're gonna have a lovely view when the tide's in. All right, wait, wait. Hey, goodbye. Hey, goodbye. Stay by me now. Very good. <laughs> no. <laughs> Morning. Morning. <laughs> hey, goodbye. <laughs> he knows when he's good because he's locked. He's waiting for me to tell him. That was good listening. He loves good listening. Yes, it was. excited there we go coming to the end of the path now so that's oh six and a half kilometers so far yeah i reckon it's just over a kilometer uh till i get back to the house you know hope you enjoyed this little walk it's so relaxing oh bike come here sit 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 Sit, 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 good boy. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, I don't know. Yeah, the fog is all cleared up anyway. Like this is where all that fog was. Yeah, it was pretty uh, interesting. I think it was forecast. coming by me. Okay, he came charging past, running, and he stopped. <laughs> He's having a rest, bless him. Yeah, what's your plans for today? Let me know in the comments. Anyone else got a week off? I'm quite lucky. Normally when I get a week off, the weather is shocking, because we've had two weeks of this nice weather. I think today is going to be the hottest we've had. I think it's going to be the hottest day of the year in my area anyway. It's going to be almost 30 degrees. Uh, now where I work, there's an outdoor swimming pool and it's so nice once you finish your shift at five o'clock, just going for a quick swim and there's people on poolside with sun loungers and you'd think you're in like Ibiza or something. It's so relaxing. Yeah, so it um, turned out, yeah, the forecast was rain all week at one point. I thought, typical. Yeah, well, it's not going to ruin my week off or anything. But I love this weather, I do. You know, it's not like, oh, it's raining, you're going to stay in the house. We would have come anyway. Oh, it's foggy, let's stay home. <laughs> Oh. I bet everyone else we've seen today, this morning, that's probably why some people are miserable. They probably got to go to work. <laughs> We're on a week off. I think I'm this week off, then I'm back in for three weeks, I think I counted. And then, under the bridge, then it's my birthday week. 
Now, normally I go away for my birthday. I went to London last week, uh, last year, sorry. It all, and Comic-Con is on my birthday weekend this year. My birthday's on the Monday. And Comic-Con's on the Saturday, Sunday before it. But last year, I said I wouldn't go again. I'm not gonna go this year. I might have a look if there's any trips, but I wanna hit up like, I've done the Comic-Con thing for years now. I wanna hit up like a game convention. Cause when I go there and whoever I'm with, we always looking for the gaming stuff, but it's more about the movies, isn't it? Now there's some really cool stuff there. You've seen the pickups I've had and most of the artwork I love talking to the artists and supporting them, you know. So I'm thinking, like Birmingham way, maybe it doesn't have to be down south. Maybe check out what else is going on. Like more like September, October time. Anyone know of any gaming conventions or something like that? And I think it'd be a good year to go because obviously it's a fantastic year for the fighting game community. With Street Fighter 6 drop in, Tekken 8 drop in, and Mortal Kombat 1 drop in. I think there'll be some like cool merch out there, you know? So now's the time to go, as they say. Right, so I'm gonna uh, flip the camera around to see how good Rossi is now. He's gonna do his uh, crossing the road training in a bit. Yeah, it's a lot busier than we normally come. All the cars, car park's pretty much full there. This will be good training for him now. You get him waiting. Right, I won't say anything, right? Just point. Oh, what a good boy. Good boy. That was good. So you don't have to say anything now. That was good listening. I call it listening because he's paying attention, I think, but he's a dog. He doesn't understand. Right. And so far, he hasn't been on his lead once. I bring it just in case, you know. I'd never leave the house. Got the dog lead, you know. Yeah, I'll have to come in. One, two, a three, a four, five. Oh, good luck. Chaos, yeah. It's absolute chaos. Happy day. I think I just know that guy that just drove past. Oh well. People come and go in your life, isn't it? Different chapters, right. Oh, there. Oh, it's like a coiled spring, isn't it? That's what he is. Oh. Disappeared. Where's my dog gone? There he is. <laughs> there we go. We're back on the railway bridge. Pretty much the end of my street now. Yeah, it'll probably be seven and a half kilometers by the time we're done, you know? So, uh, yeah, we'll probably cut it off here now. I'll get this uploaded onto the old YouTube. Yeah, have a good day, everyone. Hope you enjoy. Hope you manage to get out and get some fresh air in your lungs. It's the important thing, isn't it? There we go. We'll cut it off there. Love you. Bye.